Russian army making Kharkiv uninhabitable but will not be able to encircle city. Russia is unlikely to launch a new offensive on the Kharkiv and encircle the city this summer. The occupiers will focus on another sector of the front, according to RBC Ukraine. Against the background of information leaks about the alleged upcoming Russian attack on Kharkiv, Russian troops intensified their attacks on the city. Reports appeared in the Western media about the Kremlin's plans to turn it into a grey zone. The Russian strikes on Kharkiv have intensified since December, around the time that problems with American military aid began to make headlines. Since then, the city has suffered a large number of Russian rocket and drone attacks. But the attacks on March the 27th was perhaps the turning point. For the first time, the city was hit by a guided aerial bomb launched from an airplane with great destructive effect. This Russian attack occurred five days after missiles destroyed almost all of Kharkiv's energy facilities. Making Kharkiv uninhabitable is one of the goals of the Russians. Alexander Musienko, the head of the Center of Military Law Researches, is convinced that during a possible summer offensive, the occupiers will focus on the Donbass. The enemy's main efforts will be concentrated in the same directions as now Avdiivka and Chasivya. According to the expert, Kharkiv and Vuldar will be auxiliary or distracting. Thus, the Russians will try to stretch Ukrainian forces. That is why I think that the main group will operate in Donetsk and Luhansk regions. I assume that there will be battles and exchanges of blows along the border between the Kharkiv and Belgorod regions. But Russia will not be able to encircle Kharkiv, let alone capture it, added the expert. Russian forces have intensified shelling of Kharkiv and the region in recent days. Against this backdrop, the invaders have also resumed attacking Ukrainian energy facilities. The situation in Kharkiv is difficult, with the city under fire every day. There are also power outages in Kharkiv and the region. On April the 8th, President Volodymyr Zelensky held a meeting on the situation in Kharkiv, discussing how to defend the city. Azerbaijani COP29 leader urges US to keep climate pledges even if Trump elected. The incoming host of the next COP summit has called on the US and other nations to maintain their climate commitments even if Donald Trump is elected as president in November. In his interview since being named president-elect of the COP29 summit due to be held in Baku, Azerbaijan the week after the US election, Mukhtar Babayev told Newsweek, we hope that all the countries, including the United States, will demonstrate their readiness to fulfill their obligations, to fulfill their readiness to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Trump has premised his 2024 presidential campaign's energy policy on increasing domestic fossil fuel production, telling supporters at a rally in January that we're going to drill, baby, drill, in order to keep gas prices low. Those close to the former president have also intimated his intention to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act, a landmark piece of Biden administration legislation that provides $500 billion in investment for the infrastructure necessary for the transition to a green economy if re-elected. Asked about how he might convince an incoming President Trump to maintain America's pledges to curb emissions, Babayev responded, I think it is a very critical time for the world. We hope that all countries will fulfill their obligations and intentions to provide for that 1.5 Celsius, 2.7 degrees limit. That's why I think and I hope that all countries will demonstrate their readiness and, by action, their activities to provide this target. Azerbaijan's Minister of Ecology and Natural Resources added that his team would continue to work with the current White House administration in the lead-up to COP29 on maintaining the climate agenda it has already adopted. He also laid out his intentions for the climate conference to secure continued cooperation on curbing global warming and broker a financing agreement for poorer countries and urged nations to consider all possibilities on reducing carbon emissions amid the ongoing and environmentally costly Russian invasion of Ukraine. Babayev says his nation has already shown its commitment by transitioning to renewables. Babayev also touted Azerbaijan's very strong policy on energy efficiency programs and said it was using revenues from its oil and gas production to invest in its burgeoning green economy, a method he suggested could be adopted by other fossil fuel-rich nations.